Taurus announced the TX-22 pistol back in the beginning of 2019. It had a unique offering of a full-size 22 lr trainer pistol with a staggering 16 round capacity in the land of 10 round 22 pistols. Fast forward today and it's still pretty popular. So how is it holding up? And has Taurus been able to stay out of their own way and release products that are good to go right out of the box? We'll find out. Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel here on YouTube tripping with that BDE. That's right, Big Dad Energy. Not bragging, but my collection of Nerf guns, Hot Wheels, and Legos is staggering. You find them by just walking around my house and stepping on them barefoot. It's fantastic. That's right, this is my fourth Taurus pistol, and it is the second pistol I have had to contact customer service about a warranty claim on, and it is still unresolved about two months later. Now, how this happened, since I'm not super into 22 pistols, is I did a video on the SIG P322, and a ton of y'all in the comments got in and said, you gotta check out the TX22. It's what SIG basically ripped off and it's a great pistol. So I went out and bought one at the beginning of the second quarter of 2022 with my own money paid $299 at Shields. Didn't do anything with it for a couple weeks, took it to the range and found out that the barrel doesn't stabilize any 22 projectiles and all of the projectiles tumble out of the barrel. What tumbling projectiles mean is that barrels have rifling so that like, you know, the beginning of James Bond, you can see through down the barrel that spins the bullet so it flies straight and it stays flat. If it doesn't stabilize the projectile, it tumbles end over end and when it impacts the target, it leaves a hole in the target that looks like a keyhole or a bullet going in sideways. And that's the problem I've had with this pistol. So looking at these bullet holes, it looks like some of these are tumbling. Like that one, that looks like a radial tear kind of, but it could be a tumble. That one definitely looks like a tumble. That looks like a tumble. That looks like a tumble. That looks like a tumble. I'm gonna try and test and see if I'm getting tumbling. So my issue with the barrel, I think is a bigger issue that probably not a lot of people are talking about, at least publicly, because everyone who got one of these that works loves it. And I can understand why it's an awesome pistol. And the reason I believe that I think this is a bigger issue than just me getting a lemon is when I called customer service and the whole call took about 15 minutes. They've really improved their customer service turnaround times to get much closer to where Ruger is with their customer service. So way to go Taurus, that's fantastic. First week in May, I contacted customer service, told them the issue that I was having. And they said that because the barrels are so popular and they sell them at their online store, they didn't have a replacement barrel to send me since all of the barrels are made down in Brazil where most of the pistol parts are manufactured. There weren't any in the States to get. And as you may be aware, we are in a shipping crunch right now. It's tough to get products from overseas. Fast forward to July 3rd when I'm filming this video, I still have not received my replacement barrel that they agreed to send me. And the fact that they said that the barrels are popular and sell out on the website, the barrel's the exact same as the one that comes in the gun. People aren't buying extra versions of the barrel just so they can have two barrels on their $300 pistol. That doesn't make sense to buy a $100 barrel for a $300 gun. What that likely means is that there were a batch of bad barrels. Lots of people are having the issues that I'm having and the extra barrels that they ran got sent out on warranty calls. Now, I can't confirm that. It's totally speculation. Do what you want with that information. I'm still waiting two months later to get my replacement barrel, and in my opinion, that's kind of unacceptable, but at the same time with the global shipping issues, I understand. Now, some of you are gonna say, you're just a Taurus hater. I saw your G3C video. That's right, I did a G3C video and it didn't go well because it also had warranty issues. I'm not a Taurus hater. I'm not being paid by anyone to say anything bad about them. I'm just sharing with you my experience because negative opinions are still valid opinions and it's part of the data that you should consider if you're considering buying a pistol. If you've already got it and yours works, it's no skin off your back. It's just somebody else had a different experience. We'll come back to the Taurus thing at the end as far as the potential issues Taurus is Facing. But quickly, let me tell you about the TX22. Let's talk about the product that they have on offer because it actually is a very solid pistol, especially considering the price tag of just $300. First and foremost is it comes with two polymer 16 round magazines. These magazines are pretty good. You need to load these in a manner that has the ammo orient itself correctly. So if I'm holding the magazine like this, the bullets need to be kind of nose up, kind of like that as they're sort of arrayed in the magazine, as opposed to kind of being flat or potentially nose down. If the bullets are angled down, then the gun will not pick up the next round when that bullet gets to the top of the magazine. So how do you load it correctly? 
exactly. First and foremost, you don't take the tabs on the follower and run it all the way down to the bottom and just drop ammo in because that's how you guarantee a bad stack of ammunition. 22 LR is a rimmed cartridge not designed for staggered column magazines like this. The magazine loader that they provide with the pistol is basically worthless. Uh, you can just leave it in the box. You can try it if you want and you'll get frustrated just like I did, but it, it doesn't work. You just pull down the follower just enough to get the next round in over and over again until you stack up to the magazine capacity. The more full you load it, the harder it is to load correctly. So it is a learned skill and a pro tip is if you hold the magazine kind of upside down and you run the follower ears up and down like that a few times after you have it loaded, it kind of helps settle the bullets so that they are angled correctly. Moving on to the pistol, the pistol feels for the life of me like an HKK P30 or the VP9. It has an amazing grip shape to it. The sculpt is super duper ergonomic. There's like a single finger groove. It has a fine fissured texture, which is good enough. It's not like aggressive enough, but honestly, for a 22 pistol, it doesn't need to be that bad because there's not that much turning that's coming from the gun because it's shooting 22. The muzzle lift on a 22 isn't so dramatic, but it absolutely feels like it was made for my hands. The ergonomics on the gun are absolutely perfect. The access to all the controls are ideal for a right-handed shooter. Left-handed people will just have to complain that one of the controls isn't available on their side of the pistol, and that would be the slide release, but it's a 22 trainer, so how many emergency reloads are you really doing? Who really cares? The manual safety, if you are a manual safety person and uh, I'm not real sure why you are on a 22 trainer pistol because the use case for these is largely just loaded up at the range, fill up the magazines, point it at the steel target and mag dump. Like that's how everybody uses these things if you get honest about it. So I don't know where the manual safety comes into play. It's probably like an insurance thing or an importation thing, but it's got one, it's ambi and the paddle is shaped very, very well. The trigger is actually really, really good. For my hand, the trigger reach and length of pull is basically perfect, which is basically XL size gloves, man hands, it's right where it wants to be. And the brake is almost no over travel, which is really, really nice. And the length of pull is exactly where I'd want it to be. Very easy to pull straight to the rear. I can't really comment on the accuracy of the pistol because my barrel doesn't really work right now. So uh, I can hit steel at 10 yards pretty reliably, but if you ask me to print small groups, that's where it all goes crazy. The gun does have a rail for lights, I guess, because that's a thing that you want on a 22 pistol, maybe? I don't really know. To me, this is not something that you would use necessarily for like self-defense, but it is to train for self-defense. So maybe it's to simulate the weight of having a weapon mounted light and how it affects the balance of your pistol. Originally, I thought the zero was just off on the sight. So I, I monkeyed with it and tried to zero it. And it actually works really well as an adjustable sight, but it wasn't that the zero was off. It was that the barrel couldn't stabilize projectiles. So that's a different issue. I don't like three dot sights. It's not, a, it's not a secret. I wish that people wouldn't do this. Taurus on their G3C series of pistols has a black rear with a white dot front. That's the sight picture they should have gone for on this. The slides on the Plain Jane TX-22 are not optics ready. So if you want an optics ready slide, you can buy the entire upper if they're in stock and they haven't been in stock since I bought the pistol. But you can buy that at the Taurus website. It's a pretty reasonable deal. The slide is aluminum and it is appears to be some kind of anodized finish. Quite nice. The barrel has an adapter at the end of it. So you can actually unscrew this little adapter at the end and screw on a threaded adapter if you want to use muzzle devices, which is a really cool feature. So the takedown on the pistol is accomplished by pulling on these two takedown tabs kind of right there in the top of the trigger guard. Just pull those down and the slide will kind of come forward a little bit then lift off from the nose. You can take the recoil spring off and then pull the barrel out of the slide if that's what you're after. Reassembly is kind of weird because you kind of sit it right on top of it. You don't like kind of thread it on all the way from the front, but you just kind of mid slide there. You just press it down on there and slide it to the rear and you're back in business and it's back together test for function and you're good to go. So if you're somebody who wants to go shooting with your man-sized hands, this training gun is absolutely brilliant for it. Doesn't cost a lot of money. 22 is obviously less expensive than nine millimeter, quite, quite good. But let's come back to the issues that Taurus has. Now, this is a fun conversation that's sort of ongoing in the gun community as Taurus has reinvented themselves with better product design. And they certainly have better design, but the question is, how are they executing on it? Now, I own four Taurus pistols that I paid for all of at this point. Two of them have had barrel issues that had to get serviced by their warranty department. So that's a fail rate of about 50%, which is 
totally unacceptable and they weren't even on the same pistol. That's not a lot of pistols, I recognize, but if you take my other buddy who has a very, very good YouTube channel, he said I could only mention him if I said good things. So Graham Bates, who also has a YouTube channel, has five Taurus pistols and one of his had a barrel issue on a third model. So I had a G3C with a bad barrel that had to get fixed. He had a GX4 that had a bad barrel. It had no case support basically and was gonna blow up if he got a weak piece of brass. And then this TX22 has a bad barrel. So I'm asking the question, and I don't know the answer, is does Taurus have problems making barrels to the reliable spec? My personal experience is yes, but a lot of you in the comments will tell me that I'm an idiot and yours are perfect and you put 300 rounds or whatever through them and it's been fantastic. And fair enough. These things are made in batches and I could have gotten some from the bad batches, but it still asks the question, is the fail rate that high? Because one of the most popular comments on my other Taurus videos is if you polish the feed ramp, then the gun feeds reliably. Like you shouldn't be doing that in 2022. We understand how to make firearms feed reliably at this point. Why are they leaving the factory needing the end user to fix what should have been fixed in the factory? All the issues do seem to be barrel related. So I'm asking the question. So that's not saying don't don't buy a Taurus in their junk because that's not what they are. The design on this pistol is fantastic and I can't wait until the barrel comes in and it will be 100% because it fits my hands really well and I can go shooting with my kids and this fits my hand better than the other guns. But at the same time, it is a bit of buyer beware. You may have a barrel issue this day and age. Sound off in the comments below with your experience with the brand. I know a lot of you have this pistol or the competition version of the gun and I'm curious if you had a barrel issue or if yours just worked. I know a lot of you guys just love these things because I mean, <laughs> There's a lot to like about this pistol. It's fantastic. So would I buy this pistol again knowing what I know about it? Probably not this model, but I probably would buy the TX-22 competition. It has a feature set that's better for what I want, and this just happened to be the one that was in stock. They were out of stock on the competition. So this is what I got. I appreciate you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys.